Julian, California is a loved fall destination for apple picking, fall colors, and of course, apple pie. We decided to grab an Airbnb and take the kids down for a weekend of adventure and we loved our time in this cozy town. If you're looking for a fun fall trip for the whole family, then here's how we spent two days in Julian, California. Do know that this town gets very busy on fall weekends. All right, let's jump into it. Julian is usually more popular for the San Diego crowd, but we wanted to see what all the fuss was about, so we did the three hour drive from Los Angeles down to the small mountain town. The road to Julian is windy, and it takes about an hour from when you get off the freeway to arrive in the downtown area. We decided to go straight to the Vulcan apple farm for some apple picking, but unfortunately, we were greeted with a close sign. Our Julian trip is starting out a little rough as we went to this apple place and it is out of apples. So uh, hopefully we can find somewhere to pick apples. We may have done a rookie move and promised the kids that we were going to go apple picking and there's no apples. <laughs> we continued our hunt for apples with a five minute drive over to the Julian farm and orchard. Unfortunately, this is where we learned that most of the apple farms only have picking until September and this was the first weekend in October. Don't worry though, we get to pick some apples later in the video. Luckily, they had a few other things we could do here, including a hayride and a petting zoo. Baby, there's a monkey. Unfortunately, this petting zoo didn't have any monkeys that my children requested, but luckily there was lots of goats, there was potbelly pigs, and there was even a few chickens. Here we got a brush, and we're brushing the goats. It's a pretty cool little area and they actually have a couple set up spots where you can take photos with your family. A few of the families there said we had to go next door to Fort Cross, so we grabbed some apple cider samples, looked at the pumpkins a little bit, and then headed on. I had to grab an apple for $2 each because that's the only ones they had. Pet the goats, tried some cider, played a little bit, now heading on. Following that, we headed next door to Fort Cross, which ended up being an amazing recommendation, and you could tell right from when you walked up to the fort. Well, this place is pretty epic. You can climb up to the top of the fort. Fort Cross actually began about 23 years ago in Oak Glen, the other popular Southern California fall area. It wasn't until 2015 that it moved down here and established this awesome property, which is a great place for families to explore. We got here pretty late in the day, so we weren't able to take full advantage of all of the different things that they offered, but we did start by going to the apple cider demonstration, where they show you the entire process of making apple cider. I didn't think my three-year-olds would be interested in this, but they were basically glued to the presentation the entire time. Plus, it came with cider at the end, which is always a win. We don't have a ton of time left. We're trying to get in as much as we possibly can. This is a fun spot. They didn't have any apple picking here, but you could pick pumpkins if you were interested. Plus, there was a hedge maze that you could explore that took you over to a tire swing. Which way we go with that? Which way do you want to go? That way. That way, that's the exit. <laughs> All right, Sonny, what are we going to go do? We're going to see the reptiles. <laughs> the reptiles, here we go. The reptile show was the last thing that we got to do before the place closed, but I have to say it was a huge highlight for our weekend in the Julian area. The people running it were incredible, and they brought lots of different reptiles out that you could hold or touch. That was a super fun spot. Highly recommend, especially if you have young kids. Now we're heading on to get something to eat. We're gonna go into downtown Julian, but multiple people have told us that this Heroes pizza place is supposed to be really good. So we figured we'd just get pizza here and then we'll be in Julian all day tomorrow. I should state that most of these places are located in Wynola, which is the small neighboring community to Julian. It's only about a seven minute drive from Julian to Wynola, so most people visit both of these places when they come out for the weekend. Heroes ended up being a great wood fire pizza place that's a fun spot for dinner, especially when they have live music on the weekends. I recommend the barbecue chicken pizza here, it's pretty great. Uh, pizza monster. <laughs> <laughs> From here, we only had one more order of business, and that was to go to the Calico Cidery. Do note that most of these places are only open Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We got lucky, we went to the cidery, and they still have you pick apples. So we get to pick a few. 
We spent the next 20 minutes just wandering around the orchard looking at all of the different apples and picking enough to fill our $10 bag. I had given up on thinking that there was any place to pick apples left, but we were so excited to be able to do this with the family and everybody had a great time. This is a pretty awesome place to hang out. There's all sorts of tables and chairs all throughout the orchard. Plus, as you can see, a lot of these apples are falling down, so they have these chickens and they just move them around to eat the apples that are falling down. So you can see they're all kind of all over the orchard, which I thought was pretty cool. Huge win for Calico Cider. That was awesome and fulfilled all of our apple picking dreams. Fortunately, they didn't have anything for the children, but they did have apple picking <laughs> and the children are happy playing the phone at the moment. So <laughs> let's try. Cheers. Oh, that one's tart. <laughs> Good though, very refreshing. After finishing up our cider tasting, all that was left was to go back to our Airbnb that we had booked right in the center of Julian. I'll leave a link to the Airbnb in the description and it ended up being a great spot that was only about a five minute walk from everything in the city. Our Airbnb is attached to a Mexican restaurant, so we got some chips and guac, margaritas, and one piece to end the night. Not bad, all day tomorrow in Julian. Starting our morning by leaving the Airbnb and just walking two minutes to get some breakfast. This was actually a Monday, which was great because it was a lot less busy in the city. This is where we're having breakfast today, the Miner's Diner. Miner's Diner is situated in a building from the 1800s and it's a loved spot for breakfast and lunch in Julian. They also have an old fashioned soda fountain, which is great for an afternoon pick me up. Even on a Monday morning, almost every table in the restaurant was filled right when they opened. Luckily, the food and coffee are good and it comes fast. Jack, what do you give this place? A thumbs up or thumbs down? Thumbs sideways. Thumbs sideways, okay. <laughs> the other two highlights here, especially for families, is that it has a train that goes around the top of the restaurant and there's a candy mine in the back that you can walk down into. The candy mine is a collection of barrels of candy and you just grab a bag and fill it up and then pay by the weight. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah, the candy mine is pretty cool. Just don't take your children down here if you don't want them to have any candy. <laughs> hey, they got candy cigarettes and candy cigars too. One of the highlights is the motion activated TNT dynamite sound effect that comes when you walk down the stairs. Since it was too early for any of the shops to be open, we just walked back, waved at a fire engine, and then got in the car to head to a hike. The hike was about seven minutes down the road at a place I believe is called Inaha Memorial Park. This is a nice spot for a family friendly hike, but it's also a sad area as it's a memorial to a fire that started in 1956 and that claimed the lives of 11 different firefighters. There's some information you can read about the fire in the picnic area and then you can head out on the half mile round trip hike. This is a loop trail and it does have about 50 feet of elevation gain. This is a great hike if you have young children. It's only a half mile round trip and we're almost to the top already. Plus the views are really nice. It's not too difficult and my three-year-olds did it the entire time by themselves, but do note that it can be slippery depending on the type of shoes you have, especially on the way down. Eventually, after about 10 minutes of hiking, we made it to the summit. Jack, where do we make it? To the top. What do we get to have at the top? Um, at the sucker. A sucker at the top? Yeah. All right. Pretty cool, there's a telescope type thing up here that shows us all the different mountains that we're looking at. From the summit, there's a nice rock that you can sit and hang out at, and there's some great views looking out towards the distance and through the valley. Heading back down the hill, and then all the shops in Julian are gonna be open, so we're gonna head back to downtown and explore a little bit. Driving back into town, our first stop was at the Julian Cider Mill and Honey Company. We stopped in here to grab some fresh apple cider as the kids were looking forward to trying it. As you can imagine, it was a huge hit and after that, our next stop was at the Warm Hearth. This is by far my favorite shop in Julian. 
I was told this shop was created in 1976 and it basically has everything you could possibly imagine from home decor, clothing, books, and even toys. The best part about the shop though is how well it's laid out with just tons of interesting things to look at as you're walking around. The downstairs section in the back is my favorite, plus there was a lot of cool Halloween decor since it was that time of year. Kids are down for a nap, we're eating in the Airbnb. I'm about to go tour a mine. The Eagle Mine is a great thing to do in Julian, but I'd recommend your kids are a little bit older if you want to take them. Because of that, I set out to do the mine tour myself, and it's only about five minutes drive outside of downtown Julian. Head down on the mine tour, kind of wish I was at home tapping them. The property where the mines located was bought in the 1960s. The couple that bought it spent the next few years restoring it to what it would have looked like in the 1870s during the mine's heyday. Now you can pay to take a tour that walks you through the mining process and takes you through a thousand feet of the mine. Heading into the mine. It's the thing I always remember about this mine is how low the ceilings are. I have my head like four times since I was here. The first time I did this tour about eight years ago, it was very long and we spent a good hour underground. This time that was not the case and we were through the underground section in about 20 to 30 minutes. Low overhead. It's very low. Alright, I'm good now. I preferred it this way as we got to see a lot of the main sites, but we didn't spend too long at any one of them. This is a very cool mine that's fun to explore and it has a section where you even have to walk upstairs to get to a different level. If you're interested in this type of thing at all, then I definitely recommend you check it out while you're in Julian. This was my second tour and I'd probably go back and do it again in the future. All right, well that's still a pretty fun little tour. Definitely worth doing if you want to get inside of a mine while you're in Julian. Heading back, we're gonna do some pie tasting when the kids wake up. What are we doing right now? Apple pie tasting. All right, I think that's gonna be fun. While there are many places to try apple pie in Julian, two of the most popular are Mom's and the Julian Pie Company. We decided to grab a slice from each of them and then try them both together. Unfortunately, it was later in the day, so the selection was not as great as it is earlier. All right, we're doing the unofficial taste test. We got the regular apple pie from Mom's. We got the Dutch from Julian Pie Company. They didn't have the same of either one, so that's why we're doing this. And we got Jack and Sunny as the reviewers. Try it, see what you think. A thumbs up? What'd you think? Thumbs up? Thumbs up. Okay. Thumbs up. Side went down. <laughs> we're not sure. This one's a different one. Can you tell Dada what you think? Yummy. Okay, yummy. Jack, what do you say? Sideways. <laughs> that one's a sideways? <laughs> sideways or thumbs up? Yeah. Thumbs up, okay. Which one do you like better? I like that one. That one better? And which one do you like better, Sunny? That one. Okay, we got a completely split vote. One for one and one for the other one. I guess Amy's gonna have to be the tiebreaker. Which one do you like better, Amy? I like this one. Unofficial. Best Julian apple pie is the Julian Pie Company with a vote of two to one. I would also agree, Julian Pie Company, that the Dutch Crunch one is just incredible. Plus, experience was way better. We waited for like an hour at Mom's because they only had one person doing the whole line, and it was only like five, ten minutes here. So, also for my kids, the cinnamon ice cream at Julian Pie Company was by far their favorite. They liked that better than the pie. So there's not really much left to do on a weekday here other than to eat, so we're gonna go to the park for the kids, let them run off some energy, and then go have some dinner. If you're traveling with young children, then the Just Martin County Park is a great place to stop for a few minutes. Unfortunately, you do have to drive there or walk about a mile as it's outside of the downtown area. Saying goodbye to the park and we're heading back into downtown Julian to get dinner, I feel like Julian is basically eating, so we're definitely doing a lot of that on this trip. To end the day, we headed over to another highly rated spot in Julian, the Julian Beer Company. They specialize in both pizza and barbecue, and you can never have enough of either of those two things. We're on our third different table because the children keep deciding that we need to go to another table. This is a really cool spot though. Our last and final seat change. This, was my is, choice, though. this one has football on too. Yeah. 
too bright out there. We got the watermelon salad, a sausage, and two pulled pork sandwiches to share, and I have to say, it's a pretty good spot. Last review, is it good? Yeah. yeah? What do you think, Mom? It's good. What do you think, Jack? That's a big thumbs, thumbs up. up. Made it back to the Airbnb, just put the kids down to bed. That's the end of day number two in Julian. We're gonna spend the morning here tomorrow, and then that'll be the end of the video. Good morning. This is our last morning in Julian. We're gonna get something to eat for breakfast and go do a short hike before we start driving home. Here's our breakfast spot for the day. It looks good, but it's also the only place that's open at 7.30 and we got up at 5.45, so we're ready to eat. Since everybody had got up early, the kids had already had their normal breakfast at the house and so we just got them a croissant to share and we got some avocado toast. If you're looking for a healthy option in Julian with good coffee, this is definitely a place to go. All right, last stop in, in Julian, we're gonna go hiking. There are a lot of great hikes in the area like Stonewall Peak and Three Sisters, but we decided to head out to Garnett Peak for our hike. Mountain walk. A mountain walk, all right, let's do it. Mountain <laughs> walk. Oh. oh, you only get bigger. All right, we're starting our trail. Jack, what's your official goal on this trail? What are you What are you helping me with? I can to do the rattlesnake. Jack is the rattlesnake looker. Thanks, buddy. That's an important task. Do you think we'll see any rattlesnakes? No. Yeah, I don't think so, buddy. But thanks for looking. I appreciate it. So this is a short trail. It's only about two miles round trip. First half mile is really easy. Then it just goes straight up the hill. So we're almost to this straight up section. There are multiple ways to do this trail, but this is the shortest. Some people do like the longer trail better. That's the PCT right there, and we are going up the mountain. I'm pushing you up, Dad. Oh, you're pushing me up the uphill? Thanks, buddy. It really helps. It is a steep hill, bud. If you're carrying your children on this section like we did, note that it's about 400 feet of elevation gain and that the trail is pretty rocky on the way up. It's not bad though if you take your time and if you're not doing it in the heat of the day. As we came around the last bend, the wind really started to pick up. From here though, we got a taste of how good the views were gonna be and we could see the summit right in front of us. There is one section at the very end that you have to do a small scramble to make it up. We made it to the summit! It's really windy up here! Woo! Check it out, you can see all the way to the Salton Sea way out in the distance. The top of Garnet Peak is basically just a small rock outcropping with 360 degree views. From here you can see all the way down into the Anza Borrego Desert, out towards the Salton Sea, and of course back the way you came. It was really windy so we basically just hid in the rocks and had some snacks before heading back down. And also note that there's some good drop-offs on the side, so be sure you're watching your children. It's really windy, so we can't record too much up here, but that's it from our time in Julian. Hopefully you guys enjoyed going on this adventure with us. We'll see you on the next one. Peace out. All right, we'll see you guys later. Look at, Ooh, Look at all those cranberries. Yum. <laughs>